we seriously need to bring back the concept of, despite its flaws, I still enjoy it, instead of canceling every fucking thing in sight. We need to trust that just because someone loves a thing, it doesn't mean they don't know it's flawed. We also need to stop insisting that everyone enjoying flawed things must put 25 cents in the problematic jar and recite all its failings from memory. If I just may add, we really need to stop pretending that I'm a good person, ergo the thing I like is perfect, and if you criticize it, you're an enemy. You can enjoy stuff and keep your sense of critical thinking. I won't cite anything, but I'm morally exhausted. My cats hate each other and fight all the time. But when we leave my boy cat, who has the world's tiniest meow, on the porch too long, our girl cat will start to yell at me to let him in. I don't know where this camaraderie comes from, considering they spend most of their time slapping the shit out of each other. Mom, you left the dumb baby outside again. He's gonna die. You better let him back in. <laughs> my girl cat. Mother, you have left my dearest, darlingest brother on the porch. You must admit him post-haste. My girl cat three seconds later. Haha, <laughs> get bitch slapped, idiot. She wants him to come back inside so she can beat him up. True sibling love. The notes on this post are gold. My favorite thing about Tumblr, that in my opinion makes it far superior to other social media sites, is that new posts live side by side with old posts. These days, there's a prioritization of new content. It not only shortens the lifespan of people's work, memes and such, but it also devalues the work that goes into making certain things. Sure, a lot of posts are just random thoughts spewed into the ether, but some posts are carefully crafted videos, photos, artwork, prose, that take the creator a considerable amount of time and effort to craft. So as a content creator, it's nice to see that you can put work into a piece of content on here and it can have a life of its own. Unlike other platforms where posts live and die in a matter of days, sometimes hours. Fuck the endless turnover of content. Let's see what sticks around and continues to be interesting. Yeah! One of the worst parts of current internet culture is that it makes good old-fashioned complaining so difficult. I don't want to cancel anyone or bully anyone. I'm not trying to form a hate mob. I'm not calling anyone out. I just want to bitch about something. Because complaining is fun. Good for you, even. Is that too much to ask? Where is the room for shooting the shit? It's like the internet makes the whole world feel like they're simultaneously always anonymous strangers and in a small town where everything is personal. The Legend of Zegend. The Lelda of Zelda. Why do you need to do this? The Lelda of Zelda. Brief of the Weef. Stop this! The Legend of Zegend. Sword scored. Judy, there are limits! Here are my contributions. The Leg of Zeg. The Leg of Zeg. The Wind Wind. The leg. The leg. The leg, too. I love how Tumblr users play with JPEGs like dolls. The leg leg on Zed. Breed of the weed. The commodification of friendship is the most annoying thing to come out of the internet in ages. Like, actually, I love to break this to you, but you're supposed to help your friends move, even if it's hard work or stay up with them when they're sad, even if you're gonna lose sleep. You're supposed to listen to their fears and sorrows, even if it means your own mind takes on a little bit of that weight. That's how you know that you care. They will drive you to the airport, and then you will make them soup when they're sick. You're supposed to make small sacrifices for them, and they are supposed to do that for you. And there's actually gonna be rough patches for both of you, where the balance will be uneven and you will still be friends, and it will not be unhealthy, and they will not be abusive. Life is not meant to be an endless prioritization of our own comfort. If it was, we would literally never get anywhere, ever! Jesus! A hundred percent this! I told a kid in my class the other day that it was going to be the year of the tiger. This kid is a kindergartner, five years old. Usually, there's some interest when I bring this up, but this kid sort of sat with that for a couple minutes, 
expression settling into a thousand yard stare. Just as I was wondering if something was wrong, he looked at me with his haunted eyes and asked in a tone of resignation, when are the tigers coming? I had to quickly reassure him that the year of the tiger was like an animal assigned to the year and not another plague or natural disaster. Between the COVID, lockdowns, and huge flood of cicadas last year, this child probably decided that this was in line with how the world worked and was mentally getting his affairs in order. I guess a plague of tigers might as well happen. Most disgusting part of Tumblr culture is the kid who loves to sag their pert. Not only to sag the jam lid, but to pert it up. What a waste. What language is this? English. But in 3018. Listen, the year is 2018. You are living in the year 2018. And in centuries and centuries, who tid what to rilt or jilt around so you better appreciate it for what you have? A lot of people would stick or joiler to have what you did. Listen to me. Dude, what the fuck? Ow, 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 ow. Apollo's gonna have a ball with this one. Lol, you're only learning Japanese because you like anime. You're only interested in history because you like the anime girl King Arthur series. You're only broadening your horizons and becoming a more learned and fulfilled person because your sincere enjoyment of something not considered intellectual enough to be worthy of recognition provided you with a small window into a few of the many wonders of culture and knowledge the world has to offer and you want to obtain a deeper understanding of them. I can't begin to understand how much I've learned through fandom interests. There is no shame in enjoying things. There is no shame in learning. Businesses mislabeling their job offers in databases give so much unintentional comedy. I just searched under no experience needed and no degrees needed, and it gave me a job opening for dentist. Like sure, I'll have a go. Give me the pliers. This is brilliant. Why would you hide this gem in the tags? going to revolutionize the way I job hunt. No joke here, I just started applying for these kinds of jobs in the hopes that they'd realize something wasn't right and stop doing it. But they don't. Apply for that job. Waste their time. They're wasting yours already. 2018 was five years ago. Let that sink in. No fucking way. No, no, guys, you don't get it. I made this fucking post in 2018. As a joke. I was like, ha, could you imagine it being 2023? Could never be me. And then completely forgot until right now when someone reblogged it, and I was forced to face the horror that it is, in fact, the year 2023 right now. Posts that are better with timestamps enabled. Reblog if it is, in fact, the year 2023 right now. It is 2023, and we're in the thick of it. Having been told that it's rude to call dinner gross, our four-year-old is finding increasingly creative ways to express himself. This tastes unlucky to me. This sends my mouth into outer space. That's bad. Cauliflower is, pinch his fingers together, this much delicious. You told your toddler not to be rude, and so now he is developing an incredible skill with sick fucking birds. Oh my god, but the last one with pinching fingers together and this much delicious is fucking excellent. I am using this from now on. <laughs> The amount of time that the ancient Egyptian civilization lasted is just so mind-boggling. It lasted over 3,000 years. That's such an insane amount of time. It ended around 30 BC, meaning that it will only be extinct for as long as it existed in around 950 years. Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of Bitcoin than the building of the pyramids of Giza. They were already ancient to her. What the fuck? We have a record from the time of Ramses II of ancient Egyptians doing archaeology on monuments that were already a thousand years old to them. Ancient Egyptian archaeologists. Ancient Egyptian archaeologists! Excuse me, I have to go lay down and think about things. 
I just invented the first word that isn't made up. What is it? That's the one question I wasn't prepared to answer when I made this post, and also the one question I probably should have expected. Well, go on then. What is it? Haha. <laughs> Hey, nice weather today, isn't it? We're all so excited to hear what this word is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty sunny here too. I'm starting to get the feeling that you possibly lied to us. Hmm, no, I don't think it's gonna rain here tonight. Get them. Hey, as a comic artist, what's it like to get your car tuned? Uh. I don't own a car. I'm very confused. Is this a euphemism, dear cheese with the face of a screaming cat? I had two hours of sleep. Edit. It's a pun! It's a pun! A pun! I'm so sleep deprived, I failed my cartoonist test! Don't fire me! Okay, this is crazy. Well, in that case, hold your horses. Well said. Butterflies. Let that sink in. No way. Holy shit. Well, that sucks. Here's a bunch of anti-memes. The best type of memes. Sounds about right. This is getting out of hand. Things are getting out of hand. I beg to differ. Some more. The pros and cons of looking at your watch. Pro, you will know what time it is. Con, time will know what you it is. In the cold light of day, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but when we wrote it at 3 a.m., it was logic personified. When you look at your watch, your watch looks back. Is that why they call it a watch? Oh my god. Thinking of the time I ordered Olive Garden online, and I put please speak to me in an Italian accent in the special requests category, and completely forgot about it. And when I went to pick it up, the guy comes out and goes, Hey, I gotta your order, baba da boobity. And when I told him he didn't actually have to do it, he was like, uh, No, I was uh, looking forward to it. I was uh, the only one uh, brave enough to do it. There are literally people in the notes acting like I made this up. Guys, if I were gonna make up a story, it would be about literally anything other than this. Daily Reminders No human being is 100% happy 100% of the time. Being a person is extraordinarily difficult even in the best of times. This is not the best of times. Someone is grateful you exist. Don't argue, it's true. A bad day does not predict a bad existence. It's gonna be okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. This single truth has saved my life several times. In the end, it will be okay. I love folklore so much because depending on the location and era it comes from, it's either the most terrifying concept or the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Mexican folklore. You think this place is a normal location? You fool. Everyone knows this place is the scary location. British folklore. There's a little beast in your house. Make sure you give it the necessary porridge. Otherwise, it might turn to mischief. German folklore. For the love of God, do not trust hot people, and do not trust babies, and do not trust short men, and do not trust Christmas, and do not trust sausage, and do not trust the elderly, and US folklore. This giant boy from Texas is God's favorite. Japanese folklore. The thing was very weird, and if you did the wrong thing, it got weirder. And probably it kills you in a very messed up way. Just learn proper manners, damn it. Honestly, really sexy of Tumblr to keep follower numbers private. How many people are following me? You'll never know unless I tell you. Maybe it's a million, or a thousand, or five. Or maybe it's just you. Maybe you're the only one here, all by yourself, unable to see if there's anyone standing next to you. And you'd never know, because status here is based on opinion and not numbers. How popular you think someone is, is a vibes only calculation. And besides the chronological algorithm's optional feed, it's genuinely the best thing Tumblr's ever done. Every other social media site, here's how many followers this person has. Tumblr. Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy?
I have been a professional medium for 15 and a half years and I'm very sensitive to all of the energy forces that surround us. The instructors are great and the facility is clean, but when I walked into the studio, I was assaulted by the dark energy radiating from Monica at the front desk. Imagine getting this review. I guarantee that Monica at the front desk has not been able to live this review down and her co-workers absolutely bring it up regularly. If I were Monica, I'd print this review out and frame it. Somebody once told me, hands off my macaroni, Milwaukee pasta bandit found dead. He was picking up the gun with his finger and his thumb, raising up, pointed straight at his forehead. Put this in the fucking MoMA, the Louvre, the Guggenheim, the Whitney, and the motherfucking Prado. I never noticed you could read this whole thing with the beat of the song! Today, a first grader walked up to me, set a piece of paper down on the table in front of me, and said, Homework time! It's your homework! And I said, Alright, what do I have to do for homework? And he said, Hmm... Draw the best dinosaur you can do! And so now I have that on my plate for the evening! Yeah, Jim, I'm gonna have to cancel our afternoon meeting. A huge project I have to finish by tomorrow just got dropped in my lap. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nope, a dinosaur this time. Uh-huh. Thanks for understanding. Bye! It's actually really important to be able to entertain an idea without accepting it. It's also important to understand that our thoughts don't always reflect our beliefs, and that's normal. Being able to consider things, whether they fit within our morality or not, is actually a critical part of the brain's function. The day I learned that, like, a large number of people can't entertain an idea that they don't believe was scary. Like, lots of people cannot consider if X was true, what would be the implications. They get stuck at, well, X isn't true, so I can't consider the possible implications. Hmm, concerning. Don't mind me. I'm just thinking about how spiders are naturally talented and skilled weavers, and they know how to weave their webs and even make functional, stylish homes and nests and whatnot. So maybe that's why Spider-Man knows how to sew his suits. He inherited that trait from the spider and just instinctively knows how to weave his suits. Maybe. That's my explanation for it. Aunt May, you're buying an awful lot of yarn lately. Are you making something? Peter, who after getting bit by a spider has felt an inescapable need to knit and now his room is covered head to toe in yarn. Nope, it's just a new hobby. You know what? I complained a lot about how it was unrealistic to suddenly know how to put together stretch knits and a perfectly fitting, absolute banger of a suit, but this is an explanation I'll gladly accept. 